lot of us who are just like you. We we want to sing, we want to produce, we want to write, we want to rap, we want to write, we want to direct, we want to produce movies. And nobody in our family has ever done it. But yet we have this overwhelming sense and desire to do it. And that's when niggas end up pissing everybody off, making stupid ass comments, saying and doing things that's controversial, rubbing people the wrong way, doing things that don't What y'all don't understand is that show business can't necessarily come with logic. Show business does not come with common sense. Show business does not come with a level of, you know what? I'm going to walk up in here and I'm going to tell people every single day that I'm in love and I'm enamored with the Lord Jesus Christ. And they be like, well, man, you know, if you come in here talking about God every day, they're going to put you in a box and you ain't going to be able to sell no real records, R&B and secular. You know, if you're going to be talking about Jesus every day, maybe you need to do a gospel album. And they, they have this approach to trying to literally create fears and basically say that if you say this, if you do this, then here are the boxes that you belong in. I'm going to tell y'all something, man. Unless y'all know otherwise, can anybody explain to me how I've booked around 30 movies since I have a 12-minute crying video all over the internet with psych meds and and adverse effects and an emotional meltdown that became a meme, the running joke, and it, it was a complete beatdown on me and the most embarrassing, shameful moment ever. And there are people, human beings, that I know, that I love, who literally said, damn, nigga, it's a rat. And see that I was a meme, and what more do you want from me? And they literally created the outcome of what my life was going to be because of that shameful, embarrassing moment. And yet, thank you, Jesus. I am literally experiencing success on levels that I never experienced after hitting my worst, darkest moment. I ended up submitting to the Lord Jesus Christ in ways that had never happened before. I ended up really, really understanding and being able to grasp the understanding that it's not about your talent. It's not about your handsome. It's not about you name dropping, but in celebrity this and driving this and blinging that. My soul is not for sale. If I piss you off by talking about how much I love and I'm in love with the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. If I piss you off from talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and then you get mad because I got a potty mouth, I'm sorry. I just want y'all to understand. I am trying to figure this life out every single day in real time i am dropping the ball i am making mistakes i'm pissing people off i'm rubbing people the wrong way i'm picking myself back up i'm lonely i'm trying to figure out who's the right woman who's the right homies which family members trying to steal rob take advantage of me they know i got money they know i got materialistic things they know i got a big heart they know i'm vulnerable they know i'm an empath they know i care they also know and they also know i'm a bottom line i'm a real hood nigga that's trying to clean it up every single day what y'all don't understand about what y'all don't understand about me tell y'all something what if i told you what if i told you that i am naturally hear me when i say only only real people won't understand what i'm about to say and i don't want you to feel the way about what i'm about to say what if i told you what if i told you (laughs) 
that although I got all these teeth in my mouth, what if I told you that I am naturally not a nice person? How does that make you feel? I got the biggest charm. I'm always the funniest person in every room I go in. There's no such thing as ever being around me and not having a good time. I got a lot of teeth in my mouth. I love smiling and I love making everybody smile. But what if I told you that I am naturally not a nice person? What if I told you that? What if I told you that nothing about the environment in the hood, South Central LA, welcomes, makes you feel good about being charming, charismatic, and smiling? Like, why that nigga always happy, man? Everything about the hood creates killers, creates that crip and that blood, and the nigga pulling. You learn how to load guns and roll a blunt before you ever learn what two plus two equals trying to survive mental, emotional, psychological, and spiritual warfare. Every single day, I was playing basketball with the homie on Wednesday, and he got killed on Thursday. Or whoever is expecting me to go to school and, and focus on killed, man. What, what about that part? How do we address what I'm feeling and what keeps replaying and repeating with my mind? What if I told you that I got only one blood brother and every other week and every other month he's in and out of jail. And when my brother goes to jail, I'm out here in the hood and I got to fend for myself. And I'm not one of them niggas in the hood that's out here trying to fight every day and I ain't no killer and I ain't got it in me to become some crip and some blood and be on some gangster shit. And my brother is all that. And when he's in jail, I ain't got nobody in the hood to protect me. How does that make you feel? Sir, that's trying to get me to focus on math and algebra. What if I told you that there's no hot water and I'm taking cold baths and I don't want to? What if I told you that every time I open up my refrigerator, it's nothing there and food was just in there three days ago. But because there's seven of us living under one roof, we don't have it. Does anybody care about the traumas that we all have to try and figure out how to survive and navigate through? Y'all are going through the shit right now. But don't let all these celebrities confuse you, man. Now listen, my favorite color is red, but I grew up in crib hood my whole life. I am far from a devil worshiper. I despise anybody out here putting devil worshiping in their videos, on Grammy stages, AMA stages, whatever song, whatever tattoos, whatever symbolism. I rebuke the devil's work and all of his orchestration in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The devil is the author of confusion. Let me tell y'all something that I would never say, and I've never said. I can pretty much tell anybody, hey man, if you ever got married, what would be the reason that you would think your wife would divorce you? I said, me? Why, why would my wife divorce me? Shit, let's see. I ain't never been faithful to a woman ever in my life. That'd be a reason. Probably gonna cheat on her. But women, I love every ass, titties, flat stomachs, cleavage. I love the whole thing. One thousand percent of it there's nothing in me it's not a fiber in my body that is attracted to anything masculine i love all levels of femininity i love all all of it <laughs> you see and for me to be a regular hood nigga that's kind of regular looking you know i wasn't no light-skinned nigga with baby hairs and green eyes and all that other fly shit that it was cool to be way back then i'm a hood nigga i'm dark skinned i got all these big old teeth in my mouth i don't know if i want to sing or act be a comedian be a gangster be a football player basketball i'm trying to figure this shit out just like everybody else in the hood in real time so if you ever get married 
shit, I can easily see my marriage crashing and burning because shit, if I finally get access to all these women, I knock down as many as I can. Line them up. Let's go. So what ended up happening? I realized that I had a real app and it became out of control. And while other people may struggle, can, hey Bill, do me a favor, turn the heat on for me. It's a little cold in there. And and I'm I'm on uh, Instagram. As soon as I wrap this up, we gonna finish this ceiling, and uh, and I'm up ahead to the house. Is uh is that tea? Yes. Oh praise God. I hope this don't wake me up because warm warm things normally re-energize me. <laughs> Yeah. Is anybody sleep? Uh, sleep? Huh? No, no, no. I'm talking about here in this room, right behind the studio. Yeah, because I know, uh, I know Derek has been working super late, but I don't know if he if he drove home last night. So, I I, I got some news, man. I got some real news for y'all. I never cheated on Samantha. Uh, I got some news for y'all. The only woman I kissed in five years and being with that woman was Naomi Harris. I love her. I kissed Naomi Harris on her forehead in the movie Black and Blue. And so what I thought I would actually do to end my